us at the bar, please. Welcome to Tavern Tales, a curated 5e Dungeons & Dragons adventure set in the tales of the Yawning Portal campaign module by Wizards of the Coast. Previously on Tavern Tales, we continue down the final corridor after our heroes dealt badly with some green slime. How will they handle nine hanging glass globes? Come sit down and drink with the enemy, raise a glass and toast to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So come sit down and laugh with the enemy, raise a glass and sing to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So I won't end up being alone, cause I won't drink my drink alone. So what about you? One beer or two, I'll drink to you. Okay, so nine glass globes hang suspended from the ceiling in front of you. The light from this room is cast from some unseen source in the roof. It is 30 feet by 30 feet by 30 feet. You're in a cube. And the glass orbs hang at around the eight feet mark. So just above your heads and antlers, I mean horns. But you could all reach them with your hands and claws and swords if you would like to which one should we break first if we do wish to break them what if there are spells or things or dangerous things in these we don't want to just randomly choose one to break then how do we proceed with these can i try and look at them through the light to see if i can see what's inside them you attempt to pierce the insides of these cloudy spheres but you cannot see into them well, Vulcan, you seem to want to get through this, so why don't you pick the first one and do what you will with it? How are the orbs arranged? They are in a three by three by three pattern. Each of them is about three feet in diameter, and they all hang perfectly within that nine by nine of the 30 by 30 room. I used to play this game as a kid. This is X's and O's. And you're always supposed to either start in a corner or in the middle. So there's nine different colors to these nine orbs. Red, green, blue, gold, silver, yellow, purple, orange, and violet. Falcon's going to take the one in the middle. The silver one. The silver one. Sure. And what is he going to do with it? He's going to shake it. <laughs> uh, it nothing seems to uh, happen. No sound escapes it. You can't discern if there's any weight to it. Just hold the glass globe. It does seem rather fragile. You shake it. Vulcan's going to flick out his claw on his left index finger and cut the glass. As soon as you prick the glass, the glass shatters into the tiniest of shards into your face and everywhere, but you don't take any damage. It's just tiny flecks of glass that'll doubtlessly be irritating and annoying for the next several hours. And 11 worthless glass gems and a key fall from the interior of this glass globe and land on the ground. Well, the gems seem interesting, but the key seems quite intriguing. Well, Thasis, would you like to have a go? Is that the key for the door? Which door? The door that closed. When you looked at it, you realized that this door does not open immediately, and there is no way out of this room. Yes, potentially. We could try it. You, you want to smash more? I mean, I was just set on fire. I kind of want to take my frustrations out. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to choose the right hand corner that is farthest away from me, from the door. The red one. Sure. <laughs> Smash. What do you do with the key first, though? Does anybody try to do anything with the key that I'm gonna fell I'm going to try the door. I, okay. I mean, so that you're, was my you're picking thoughts. up the gems that were on the ground. You realize they're just pieces of glass. They're not worth anything. You take this key. What does it look like? It has a, a orb, like, key handle to it. And it has uh, teeth as as key teeth. Like actual teeth? Yeah. Or just 
facsimiles there too. Well, you know, whatever. It, they look real. They cool. you fit this gross looking globe key <laughs> tea, teeth key, a Keith into the door. <laughs> um, it does not turn in the door or unlock it. Poor Keith. I'm going to hand it to Zubis to hang on to in case we need it later. So you pass the key to Zubis and then in your frustrations, you lash out and hit the red orb. I'm never frustrated, but yes, I will. I'll be like, this is not the way out. So you, uh, X takes the square. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a new Jersey Topia thing. <laughs> or playing X's nose. You're playing, You're playing X's, X's nose. nose. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> You smash the red one and a whole bunch of things happen. A whole bunch of money cascades down with the tinkling sounds of coin on stone. A key falls in amongst that as well. However, while this room had no shadows before, three insubstantial shadow-like entities coalesce out of the sphere itself and rise up to whisper in shadow-like words, and I need you all to roll initiative. Nice. Where was that before? The other side of the die. <sighs> For real. Vulcan. 20. Zuvis. 22. Faces. Six. You're really focused on the money. <laughs> As these things rise up, it is Zuvis' turn. I will firebolt the one closest to me. Go for it. Roll an attack. Oh, 26. That's enough to hit. Oh, 13. So as you cast your firebolt, what does this look like? I once again grab the bottle with the copper bottom and the shower head, which is convenient because it was already built from when I used it for Flaming Sphere. And when I press the trigger, a shower of green liquid comes out of the spray bottle and mists all over this shadow entity. Mm -hmm. It does not appear to do as much damage as you think it should, because this is a shadow, not some sort of living, fleshy creature. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? No. Okay, moving on. It is Vulcan's turn. So Vulcan, out of character for him, is he's not going to into a rage. Is he, he's instead going to use the great axe that he's been lugging around on his back this whole time. And has barely used. Sure. And he's going to levy a swing at the nearest thing in front of him. Sure. Is it the same one that Zubis has been attacking or is it a different one? The same one. Okay. Go for it. 19. That is enough to hit. Six. Six, six, six. It as well. I mean, your great axe is non-magical. Correct? Correct. So it does not appear to have taken very much damage from the solid swing of your axe into the insubstantial flesh of this shadow. It is now the shadow's turns. All three of them attempt to attack Zuvis Muvdath. Aww. Rid. Indeed. <laughs> your armor class is now a 19 mm -hmm. because you finally got your infusions sorted out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So only one of the three has managed to strike you appropriately. Wonderful. You take nine necrotic damage and your strength is reduced by two. That's from a nine to a seven, which makes you a minus two to strength. So each of them reach out tendril-esque, shadowy hands and attempt to grasp you. Only one of them has managed to do so. And as you are gripped in their shadowy grasp, uh, you can feel your vitality and strength flow out of you. Okay. As we turn to Thesis Faye's turn. Hello. I would like to hit one that hasn't been hit already. And uh, one of the other two with an Eldritch Blast. Absolutely. And I'm going to use my, uh, just, just a single finger because I'm combining them Ooh. into a, do a shot. And you say, Kapow! <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't really have anything I say with it. I thought you said something to do with the Raven Queen for these no, Eldritch Blasts. I don't think so. 
Okay. <laughs> you might know better than I do. But it does look like cool black lightning. Yeah, with like a little bit of purple. So I got a 15 and I got a 22. The 15 misses, the 22 hits. Excellent. Seven damage. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? No, I'm okay for now. Sounds great. We turn to the top of round two, where it is Zuvis Moveath's turn. I'm going to cast Blur on okay. myself. All right. Okay, so it's a concentration spell. Yep. And it just creates disadvantage when they attack me. I need to know what it looks like and what you say. <laughs> I grab a smaller bottle than what I am typically use, and it has... It almost looks like an old style perfume bottle with a little air pump. Yep. And I put it towards my face and I start perfuming myself with this sparkling silver mist. Cool. And it, my face starts to distort as does the rest of my body. Sounds great. Do you have to say anything when this happens to activate it? Time to become cloud-like. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say clab-like? Cloud. I like clab-like because it's not a word. <laughs> And you would never get caught accidentally saying it. So, yep. Okay. Cool. Cloud like or clab like? Clab like. I'll leave that to the listener to determine <laughs> what it is that Paige actually said <laughs> as we move forward. You've cast Blur. That's your action. Is there anything else you'd like to do? No. Sounds good. Moving on to Vulcan. So, seeing that his great axe didn't do a lot from what he could tell, these apparitions or shades or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's going to angrily plant his great axe into the ground. Okay. And then he's going to enter rage, but he's not going to do his claws or his tail. He's going to do his teeth. So he grows his teeth and they, what happens is his top fangs start growing down long like a saber toothed tiger. Are you saying teeth? Teeths. His, Are you a child? His teethies <laughs> grow down. Sure. And then he's going to try and bite. Okay. Try to bite a shadow. He's going to try and bite the shadow. <laughs> okay. Are these teeth magical teeth at this point? or Yes, they are. Okay. Apparently. Sounds good. Roll your attack. That is 12. That is not enough. You have definitely missed. I think you overgrew the saber tooth tiger teeth a bit too much, and you have no idea how to wield these walrus motherfuckers. It's been a while. That are growing out of your face. Yeah, that doesn't even happen because your mouth can't fully close right now. Yeah. Delightful. <laughs> Thank you for this wickedly fun color. You may have a blue gem. Ooh, go teeth. I now name you Tusk. It is now the shadow's turns. Undeterred by the blurriness of Zuvis Moonvdaf, the shades continue to attempt to strike and penetrate him, even though he is a 19 armor class. And I have to roll disadvantage. They have all failed. Woo. Do you say that? Yeah. Spooky. <laughs> Spooky. You blur back and forth. And they are unable to find or gain purchase against your corporeal form. Uh, though it does look like several of them would have found you had you not done this. And I'm telling you, 3d4... Strength damage would not be something you'd want to have happen to you. Nope. So that turns us to Thesis phase. All right. I'm going to shoot at the same one again that I was shooting at before. One definitely missed. And then I got a 21 with the other one. All right. 13 damage. Describe for me what happens to this shade. Oh, sure. Uh, so um, finger outstretched towards the singular shade. Actually, it's two fingers and one is kind of off to the left because it misses completely. The middle finger and it's kind of like Thesis is giving the shade the middle finger and the lightning jags across the room and it sort of explodes the shade. But then it sort of looks like it's being consumed by some other type of shadow that has slight wings. I love it. That's great. Shade. Two of your colleagues appears to be pulled into your finger. Yeah, sure. What like was it. the roll on the other D20? It was a three. Three total? Yeah. No, it was a three plus uh, eight, so 11. That is an unfortunate die check as your the force from your Eldritch Blast 
shatters one of the other glass spheres As in the room. Uh-oh. Whoops. Please pick for me one of the remaining colors of spheres. I Green, like blue. Blue, blue. Jewelry. Expensive. Gorgeous. Beautiful jewelry. Necklace and earrings and a tiara fall from this sphere mm -hmm. as well as a key to land heavily on the ground. Now there are two keys on the ground. But in addition to that, the wind picks up immediately and a living hurricane appears in the room as well. So now an air elemental, prodigiously angry and violent, descends into the room. Who farted? <laughs> as we turn to the top of the round again, the air elemental will go when the shades go in this round. It is Zuvis Muvdath's turn. I would like to try and run and grab the keys that have fallen and try to open the door. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Yeah, why not? I normally you only pick up one thing, but if that's all you're going to do with your turn, yeah, then by all means, I'm trying to get us that out of here. Absolutely, you grab, pick up both keys. What do they look like? One looks like your typical golden key cool. for an old door. The other one looks like it's almost MacGyvered out of sticks and twine. It doesn't look like a very sturdy key. It does not open the door. And neither, too, does the normal looking key oh, no. open the door. Oh, we're fucked. <laughs> there you go. That's that's your turn. You have to maintain concentration for the blur. And it is your turn, Vulcan. Vulcan's still hungry. Hungry for shadow. He's going to try and bite the shadow again. By all means, go bite a shadow. Well, he's in a rage. He doesn't know better. He does. Hey, Silly 22. Falcon. That is enough to hit. You have bit a shadow. <laughs> All right, sweet. <laughs> How's it taste? Like popcorn. Mm. So, so he takes seven damage, magical piercing damage. And did I, you roll a one? I did roll a one <laughs> on the D8. Okay. This shadow is destroyed Yay. by your bite and is consumed by you. <laughs> His hair starts flaming, shadowing darkness. <laughs> Maybe kind of cool. That's weird. As he slurps up the shadow. And is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn other than belch contentedly? I mean, I, I guess I could move to the other shadow. The other shadow's right there already. And it does. It strikes at you. Of course it does. 22 to hit. Yeah. All right. You take nine necrotic damage. Yikes. And you lose four strength. Oh. Okay. Off the bottom number. Okay. So that's, uh, you're now only plus two, I do believe, depending on what your plus was. Because I'm at... <laughs> and he's no longer plus four. Uh, yeah. That's pretty huge, actually. Why? He couldn't even open a door. Oh, <laughs> that was the one shadow reaches out, strokes your back, and pulls all the muscles out of your lats, leeching the energy and vitality from you. And you can hear its cold voice whisper... Something completely unintelligible, but filled with longing for its missing companion that you've devoured. But it does not have language, so it is not discernible. Neat. The air elemental performs a whirlwind. And everybody mm -hmm. needs to make a strength DC 13 saving throw. <laughs> okay. God. How did you do face his face? A six. A six, not enough. How did you do Zuvis move death? 18. Wow. Ricky. I spent a flash of genius. <laughs> Muscles. Oh, okay, because I was going to say you're currently at a 14. And then I got plus four. Okay. 19. So the two of you hold fast and hold strong. Thesis phase, however, is picked up and thrown bodily into a wall, taking 15 bludgeoning damage. You're uh. thrown and land prone on the ground. Ow! With a clonk. However, the two of you who are successful both take seven bludgeoning damage and are not flung about or knocked prone. That was the Aeromoto's turn. It is now Thesis Faye's turn as Thesis Faye lays on the ground. I'm going to use my move action to stand Sure, up. yeah. You use your move action, half then, of your move to get yeah, up. Yeah, and then I'm going to shoot the wind elemental back. All right. You shoot the other elemental, I'm guessing, with a... Eldritch, Eldritch Blast. Blast. Yeah. Lordy. All right. A 23 and a, <laughs> a 10. 
The 23 hits, the 10 misses. The 10 does not shatter one of the other globes in the room. Yay. Though. All right. And a nine damage to the air elemental. Okay. Hard to tell if you're hurting it or not, but you know, force damage from your strikes definitely ring and hit true. We are now at the top of the round again, and it is Zuvis move death's turn in the third round. I am going to use Ray of Sickening on the air elemental. I know. I don't have all of my stuff now is like fire, acid, or poison, which I feel like doesn't work against any of these. What does Ray of Sickening do? Ray of Sickening, greenish energy lashes out towards a creature within range, make a ranged spell attack against the target. On a hit, target must take two, 2d8 poison damage, must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, it is also poisoned until the end of your turn. Might be immune to poison. I know. It's probably immune to everything except like water, ice, wind. Cool. I've asked what it does. Mm -hmm. What level spell is this? It is a level one. All right. 15. 15 is enough to beat the armor class for this air elemental. Damn, I should have said, is that all you want that to be? Why? Because then you might have spent a flash of genius Oh, I to make sure you hit. Yeah. But I'm not going to make you do that. Nope. Now you strike true. You hit the air elemental. You're positive that you have. You roll your damage. Oh, that's pretty good. 11. However, you realize this is not a living creature and poison therefore has no effect upon an air elemental unfortunately something you have learned too little too late and have expended a first level spell slot is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn nope vulcan so vulcan is going to he because he's obviously facing the other shadow and he's going to lash out with his teeth once again throws himself forward yeah, yeah. into the shadow bodily he kind of leaps forward a bit in the jumping bite Okay. Teeth first. Teeth first. <laughs> 21. That is enough to hit. This is the weirdest thing ever, by the way. Like, normally in order to get a successful bite, you would have to grapple something first, and then you could begin the biting, and you just get to run up and bite <laughs> everything that is... Like, even though people say, he bit me on the playground, it's usually because you got grappled, and then they bit you, or they grappled you, and you mm -hmm. bit back. So, nonetheless, you have been successful with your weird ass saber tooth <laughs> walrus tusks and you because i lost health does that mean i lose two off the plus to damage yes okay so that would be 13 damage okay i gave him three back anything else you'd like to do with your turn where you bite a shade nope i'm good right. the shade because you're right there attacks you back with an 18 is that enough to hit you? Yes, sir. Then you take another D4 of strength loss. Oh, my God. Four. Another four strength loss, which puts you at, I believe, 11 strength now. Puts me at 10. 10 strength. Yikes. Zufus, he's almost the same strength as you. I was going to say. But, but you also suffered strength damage. So uh, just so you know, if you are reduced to zero strength, you die immediately. You don't even get saving throws. Okay. Yeah, it's a thing. Any, uh, any of your stats get reduced to zero, you die. Yeah. Yep. Nonetheless, Shade's looking very worse for the wear as we turn to the air elemental who cannot whirlwind again this time. You saw that die I threw over yeah. there? It's a two. So the whirlwind does not get to come back into effect this turn. The air elemental instead will make two slam attacks at Thasis and Zuvis. Thasis, the slam attack against you is a 21. Ow giving you 14 bludgeoning damage and Zuvus, I believe I've missed with a 14. Yes, you have. Especially because I'm still blurring. And then uh -oh. it's Whirlwind is back for next turn. Boo. As we turn to Thesis Phase's turn. All right. Oh, I'm going to attack it with something else. All right. What are you going to do? I note that we will once again turn to Zuvus Move Death at the top of the round as soon as Thesis has gone. I'm going to cast Witch Bolt. Edit. <sighs> All right. What type of damage does Witch Bolt do? Lightning. It is an air elemental. Is that not going to work? All right. Would I know that before I try? It's not that it wouldn't work. You just know that force damage is better. Very few things are actually resistant to force oh, okay. damage. okay. So I'll, while you don't know if it's... I'll keep on doing my Eldritch Blast then. It's exactly. way cheaper. The cheapest. Oh, a natural 20. Yeah, there you go. And an 11. <laughs> the 11 misses. Okay. But the natural 20. Flip a D2, please. Oh. 
you shatter another one of the globes. Yeah, oh, no. as I do. <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment. Right. As you roll your damage from your exceptional strike, your natural 20. I roll two D10s, yes. yes. 16 damage to the air elemental. Sounds great. Pick a color for me. Green, gold, yellow, purple, orange, violet. Violet. Sure. You shatter the violet sphere and a key and a little devilish imp-like figure <laughs> falls out of it and says, uh, the score is two to one and uh, we're sitting here taking, whoa, <laughs> who the hell are you folk? And uh, Quasit picks itself up off the ground, stands there next to the key. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? That's all I can do. We move to the top of the round where it is. Zuvis moves Dath's turn in round four. I'm going to yell out to the thing that's just fallen to the ground. Sure. And say, hi, we're in trouble. Do you know if that's the key to get out of here? And then are we kind of on one side and the elemental and the shadow are on the other? The elemental is all around the room pretty much. It's a large creature and you're in its space, essentially. And Vulcan and the shade are dancing somewhere near it. I'm going to cast aid on the three of us. All right. What does that look like? What do you say? I pull out a carton from my bag that looks like a metal box of band-aids. And I pull one out and I throw it at my target and it sticks to them and it absorbs into them and bolsters them. So I just kind of like throwing stars, but I'm throwing mechanical band-aids that are magical. What does aid do? So three creatures gain five. Your hit point maximum goes up by five, Whoa. and you get an additional five hit points. Cool. Temporarily. For eight hours. Whoa, damn. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn? Zuvis moved death. No. Okay, perfect. Vulcan. He's in kind of a pickle right now because he's very weak now. Yes, he is. He's getting weaker and weaker by the minute. You are Jennifer Gray. It's Patrick Swayze. It's about to pick you up and hold you aloft. Yeah. And say something like, And I had the time of my life. I ate up all of your strength. He, yes, yeah, I did. He's, he's going to try and finish off this shade in front of him. All right. With what? Yeah, he's going to attack with his teeth again. All right. Try and bite the shade. Go ahead. Once again, 19. Very lucky roll. Yeah. So 20. You bite the creature. So four total. Because you're at zero strength. Yeah. And then as a result, you defeat the shade. Nice. The third shade is swallowed by Vulcan. Delicious. I don't know if he's going to be the same after this. Slurps his exceptionally <laughs> long tongue. Did you get your two hit points or whatever you get for slurping three shades? Three hit points, yes, I do. How'd you get three this time? Because it's my con modifier. Okay. That was Vulcan's turn in round four. It is now the air elemental's mm -hmm. turn. And the air elemental is gonna do a whirlwind. Huh. Everyone make a strength saving throw. Come on, get lucky. Thank you. No. 16. That is enough. You take seven points of damage. You're not knocked prone. How did we do over there, Mr. Wimpy? 20. How? I rolled a 17 and a 16, and I have three to pro proficiency bonus. I guess that is enough. Damn, dude. Rolling super well. Yeah. You get advantage on strength saving throws? While I'm in rage. Cool. Can I use two flash of geniuses? No. How did we do? Nine. That is not enough. You are flung into the door, take 15 points of bashing damage, and you're knocked prone. You also take seven points of bashing damage from this whirlwind as it spins ever so angrily about, and it has the whirlwind rechar recharged for next turn. So, Zuvis moved death. You are laying on the ground, battered and bruised and injured, very hurt. What would you like to do? While I remain sitting, I'm going to pull my canister out, my spray bottle, okay. and I'm going to launch a firebolt at it. All right. Shoot a firebolt at the uh, air elemental. Yes. 18. That is enough to hit. 12. You remain laying on the ground. I know you said you were sitting, but I feel like that's nicer. I feel like you were actually the opposite of sitting. So your like, thighs were, the front of your thighs were against the ground and your chest and belly were up against the door and you were bent at an awkward, terrible position and you kind of just turned your head and body and said your words and shot your spray bottle. Probably. Yep. Yep. As we turn now to Vulcan in the fifth round. So even though Vulcan's biting all of the shades and stuff, 
He's not going to try bite the air elemental. <laughs> That's a smart choice. So he's going to use the Moon Hut's short sword that he has. Okay. He's going to just try and finesse it because he can't lift the great axe because it's too heavy for too him. Too heavy for you now. Because <laughs> he's so wimpy. He's so wimpy, so he's going to finesse the air element <laughs> Sounds with the great. Moon Hut short sword. Let's make your strike. Seven. Total? Total. You flip one of the D2s. One. Yeah, nothing happens. You miss another one of the globes as you uh, swing with the moon touch sword, and it doesn't even feel right in your hands. It has been squeezed and held tightly by the Warforged, and it's like the Warforged's fingers, delicate and porcelain though they may be, have worn their way into the leather hilt, and it doesn't feel right in your hand. You broke the hand. <laughs> You're squeezing it too tight, so it's all like warped. <laughs> exactly. It, is, it just fits Thasis' hand at this point, after so much time spent there. As we turn now to the air elemental i haven't gone right you're at the end of the round the air elemental went before though it did the whirlwind and then oh take your turn by all means i'm gonna eldritch blast the air elemental hey two hits excellent you've struck true twice with a 21 and an 18 Mm, 22 22 two 14s that's awesome 24 yeah (laughs) great the air elemental spins more vociferously oh and does another whirlwind everyone make a strength saving no. throw as the globes are spun about no how did we do zuvis nine well you are already flung up against this door you are spun around and thrown into the corner and you take 15 points of bashing are damage as well furthermore how did we do faces phase 16 16 is enough you take seven points of bashing damage how many hit points do you have left? Seven. Wow, that's awesome. And how did we do Vulcan? Ten. You fail. Your prodigious strength has left you. You have no ability to hold on to something, and you are picked up and flung against a wall. Flip me the D2 again. The opposite. Huzzah! One. You crush one of the globes as you go <laughs> flying past. Aww. Which globe is it that you pick? Is it green, gold, yellow, purple, orange? Gold. The gold one. A potion falls to the ground, lands with a heavy tink, and a key falls to the ground as well. Maybe not problematic yet. So you're flung into the wall. You take 15 bashing damage, plus an additional three bashing damage from slamming into the wall from where you were standing. And does it recharge it? It does. No. Oh my God. We gotta kill it. You really do. All of you are knocked Pro- no, you are Me, not currently I'm knocked fine. prone. Face is phase. It is your turn. All right. I'm going to shoot it again. You son of a bitch. I missed a lot. You missed both times? Yeah. Damn, you I were, was so distracted. You were the one who we needed to no, succeed I, I am there. aware. I should spend something. I don't know what I can spend. Are you going to spend a blue gem to re-roll one of those? Yeah. Go ahead. Do so. Spend a blue gem. Here, roll blue gem. as though you had advantage and re-roll one of the dice again. Ooh, a natural 20. What? That's nice. oh. Wow, that's lucky. Very, Yay. very lucky. 12. Not not great. Not it's great not. at all, no. You know, take what the dice give you. The angry air elemental takes this force damage in its ethereal shape. I mean, you can make it out. It is not just a whirlwind. There's some sort of figure-esque element therein. It's all out of me pummeling it with force damage yeah it, you keep hitting it with force damage after force damage after force damage, and uh you have almost destroyed it it uh looks at you yeah it kind of eyes you like wow you're really attractive but i mean it speaks that entirely in elemental talk and you can't understand orin or primordial correct no so neither here nor there as we turn to the top of the round it's and very it is blowy zuvis moved death's turn like i can heal or i can attack it destroy it we might not get another round to heal ourselves if we don't destroy it. <laughs> Tried biting it, but that didn't work. I'll firebolt it. All right. That's the best you got. Oh, I need you to make a concentration check to make sure whether or not you maintained blur. You did. I really want to stay blurred. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. It's not actually attacking you. It's making yeah. you make strength saves. Because so. my other thought was using gust of wind against it, but I don't think that actually does any damage. That just pushes it and i don't want to use my last second level spell slot so firebolt okay roll your attack plus my flash of genius okay so you've rolled a five you're plus seven correct yep and that is 12 yep 
Okay. Plus four. Plus four 16. is enough to get through with that flash of genius. Roll your damage. 13. All right, Zuvis, that was your turn. Vulcan, it's your turn in round six. What color is the potion that fell out of that thing? Feathery white. Mm. No. <laughs> you can do nothing against the air elemental? I can s- attack it with the moon touch short sword. Uh-huh. So I'm going to do that. All right. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to spin a blue gem. All right, so you have advantage on the check? Yes. <laughs> Does 11 or 11 hit? Oh, no. Ah, I will use my last flash of genius. Here's a question. When you use flash of genius, is that a reaction? Or is that just you get to do it? Because you did just spend it. This will make all the difference. Because an 11 plus 4 is 15. And that's exactly what you need to hit this air elemental. So why don't you roll your damage so we have that in front of us already. Before we find out if this is... Okay. So you would do 8 damage. Is that right? Okay. So it says... When you're another creature you see within 30 feet makes an ability check or saving throw, you can use your reaction to add your intelligence modifier. You You can use it a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier. And you've already used your reaction this round. Oh, no. So. We're all going to die. On the air elemental's turn, because I did roll the d6 and it did recharge, it will once again do the whirlwind. Everyone roll a strength save. Yeah, 20. No! Well, there you go. I got a natural 19 plus four, so. You only take seven points of damage. And I dropped to zero. Yeah, exactly zero. 20 total. Then you succeed and? Two. You have failed. You take 15 points of bashing damage and you're thrown into a wall. How many hit points did you have? I had four. You had four. So when you're thrown into the wall, that is your first failed saving throw. Awesome. Someone reach into my bag. Ooh, also flip a D2. When? All right, you don't hit any glass spheres as you fall. Vulcan, you see Thesis Phase stand true and then slump to the ground unconscious, did not get thrown, but took enough damage. This is one of those times where I normally always take the average, right? It's 15 points of damage and in this instance is seven. But I kind of feel like if I rolled lower than 15, you would only take six points of damage and you might still be strong. So... While I've already taken out one person, two people are down. Vulcan, it's your turn. Zuvis, make a death save. On top of the other one? Oh. Yeah, you took the one for the damage, and now you're going to take the one on your turn. How do I do a death save? So you're going to take the, the die and your roller, and you're going to hide them in your roll quite privately to yourself. Okay. And no one is going to know if it was a success or a fail except for you. And what's a success and what's a fail? If you roll an 11 or higher, that's a success. If you roll a 10 or lower, that's a failure. Okay. I watched a person I know and have discussed, talked with in the past for a role-playing game called Blackwater D&D. And her name is, the character she plays is Calliope. Her name is Len. And they're starting off the game for the first time. They all live in Vancouver, but they started playing in the pandemic. And they were all playing over Zoom distance-wise. And she always rolled the die in roll 20. Mm. she's sitting with a big mitt full of dice in front of her. She doesn't get to have a screen in front of her anymore. So everything's now in Mm. front of her. And she's like, she's got a D20 in her hand. She's about to roll the die. And she's like, I have a question. I've never really rolled one of these before. So when I go to roll this, how do I make it look that I'm, so that I'm not like jerking off a ghost. (laughs) And I, I have to say it was one of the funniest things I'd seen live in a long time. She's literally like, because she doesn't, she knows she's on camera. This is going to look like she's like, "Mm, I don't. And everybody around the table is like, you just go with it. You just go for it. (laughs) Well, it looked even worse probably with the tray down here. The one guy, the one guy's like, if you have an advantage, you just get them both going. (laughs) So I even think like, you know, this adjustment looks like you're played with the balls. I, I know. Right? So tickle that taint. Anyway. Yeah. We don't know how well Zuvis has or has not done as we turn to Vulcan. He's going to try and kill us. Go for it. Element. Roll your strike with your finesse weapon. For the love of God. This is where the adventure ends. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe. How did we do? 16. That is enough to hit. Oh my God. Roll your D6 plus your dexterity bonus. It's an eight. You've killed it. Oh my God. Oh. Yay. Did you roll a six again? I rolled a four. And a plus your two, plus your two. And that is enough for you to dismember this air elemental. You prick it in such a way that it is sucked back into the air plane of air because 
you don't technically kill these things and the wind dies down with an immediate drop and you stand there breathing a heavy sigh of relief and you and a tiny little figure standing in a corner are the only two things standing in the room faces faces eyes which are normally actually a black uh, actually because i have the parapet of wound closure okay I, I immediately regain consciousness the periapt of wound closure yeah. brings you back yeah. to life does it do anything when that happens does it like spark you or jolt you or something yeah i like that I like and you that. return with yeah. one hit point yeah or zero it I, I always return to stabilized yeah cool you don't even have to make a death save <laughs> no that's amazing yeah it's a cool how thing. often does it work it actually is all the time and also it works on uh hit die which i didn't read before works on hit die what does that mean it means that whatever i roll on my dice for my hit die it doubles the amount that it returns to me i like it <laughs> <laughs> when it's my turn i stabilize i even have defy death too because i'm a uh, wood cool okay yeah you you're still unconscious i stabilize yes but yeah. you're stable yeah, because I don't have to make death saves. Yeah. Exactly. I'm there. It just shocks me. And I'm like, Bleh. I'm laying down because I'm tired. You definitely fell to the ground and are we're laying there unconscious on your turn, which is now you stabilize yeah. and uh, you're still unconscious. We turn to Vulcan. He's going to go over to Zuvis okay. and use two of his six healing potions, lesser healing potions. Okay. And- before you can oh. get there. Okay. Because you took your action. Right. To kill the monster. Yes. It died. You stood there panting for a moment. Could move with your turn to stand over Zuvis. Yeah. However, Zuvis does have to make another save because it will now be Zuvis's turn before ah. it is your turn again. Gotcha. So now make the check and we will see. <laughs> <laughs> it looks even worse because she looks like you're concentrating. Like- <laughs> it's just a 1d20 if it's. 11 or higher. I'm not used to death saves. I know. (laughs) Okay. Dude, you have only had to make two death saves. Well, but I automatically had one. Right. Is that your third death save failure? No. Or did you make a success? I made a success. Because if that was two in a row failures, that would be three and you'd be dead. It was a 12 and it rolled when I moved it. (laughs) You... (laughs) <laughs> Never have to tell us what they what they were, and okay. if you cheated or did not cheat, that's up to you. If you wanted them all to be failures and be dead and see what that was like, that's on you. You get to make that decision. Zuvis is not dead. You can see that Zuvis is dying, though, and you uncork two bottles of my lesser healing potions of healing potions and pour them all over the face of <laughs> Zuvis as so you pop his fishy face open and. He, Forced him to suck back two health potions. You regain 16 or so hit points at most. We'll get there. So the three of you lay there completely unconscious, very wounded. Rage has ended. Mm-hmm. Your teeth fall out and land with a clatter on the ground. <laughs> There's no way those are sucking back inside of you. No, they go. And Zuvis Movedath uh, regains consciousness with a... That did not go how I thought it would. Chad went up to the air elemental there, folks. I thought for sure that it was going to take him down, especially when the three shadows were <laughs> facing them off again. But uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Jot. Uh, thanks for freeing me. If there's anything I can do to help, glad and love to do so. I think we might use your services at a later moment while we take our time to recompose ourselves and not be dying anymore. Sounds good. Hey, uh, somebody broke your doll. He wakes you up. Jot does? Yes. How does he do that? He kicked you in the shoulder with his foot. <laughs> <laughs> when Thesis wakes up, uh, she sees him basically in front of her face. Yeah. She's going to grab him and cuddle him like a teddy bear. Oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> I give up. I surrender. <laughs> Just let it happen. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> and on that note, we'll end today's session. Okay. The whole time I was thinking, I have a rod of resurrection in my bag. <laughs> Raise your glass and drink with the enemy. Raise your glass and sing with the enemy. And I'm not gonna do this on my own. Raise a glass and sing to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own.
This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales, a curated Dungeons & Dragons 5e game set in the Tales of the Yawning Portal adventure module by Wizards of the Coast. Our intro and outro music is the song Tavern Tales by the Bad Billy Band. You can find out more about the Bad Billy Band on iTunes or at www.badbillyband.com or follow them on Twitter at Bad Billy Band. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes or find us on Twitter at Tavern underscore Tales. We'll be back next week with more of the adventure. Adventure.